Good morning students. Uh, in module 2 of electron devices, we are going to discuss PN junction diode, its characteristics and applications. So, from today onwards, we are going to discuss module 2 concepts. So, as you can see, these are the concepts we are going to discuss in module 2. First, we will be dealing with formation of PN junction diode. Later on, we will be discussing its characteristics. We have many characteristics of diode. It is act, it is basically acting as a switch. So, switching characteristics. We are going to discuss the voltage and current characteristics of uh, PN junction diode as well as Zener diode. Zener diode is an advancement or an alternative to PN junction diode followed by different other diodes, tunnel diodes and we are going to discuss the applications of diodes. Applications namely rectifiers, filters, clippers, clampers, all these are wave shaping circuits. So, first topic we are going to discuss today is formation. How a PN junction diode is formed? So, as you can see, this is the image of PN junction diode. So, this is the symbolic representation. We call this as symbolic representation of diode. The name of diode basically means two, two terminals, diode. Diode means two terminals. The first terminal is positive terminal. We call this positive terminal as anode. And the second terminal is negative terminal. Negative terminal is cathode. So, the current flow will be in this direction. So, as you can see, the arrow mark, you can see the arrow mark, right? So, this arrow mark represents the current flows from positive to negative. So, this is the symbolic representation of a diode. And uh, in our laboratory classes, you can see this is a commercial diode. In lab classes, when you come to the lab classes, when you do the experiments, you can see the diode actually. So, one terminal, you will have a silver color band. This color represents, this is negative and the one which is without silver band is positive. So, this is my anode and this is going to be your cathode. So, please remember which is anode and which is cathode. So, the next one is applications. So, where actually this diode is um, applied? So, you can see in radio and TV, when you are tuning the frequency in your radio, there diode is helping. When you are changing the channels, when you are changing the brightness in your TV, when you are changing the contrast level in your TV, there our diode is applied. And then optoelectronics, wherever you can find the fiber optic cables, there we have this diodes. And then we have power supplies. You have our uh, laptop charger, you have mobile charger. Everything is basically a diode. Next, industrial electronics. You can see many uh, adapters, stabilizers. Say for example, some stabilizers, AC stabilizer, fridge stabilizer, refrigerator. All these things require some stabilizing unit. All these are comprises of diodes. Followed by instrumentation amplifiers and then computers. In all electronic devices, we have this diode as our basic element. And now coming to the formation, how a diode is formed. So, let us see, there are two semiconductor materials. One is anode and the other one is cathode. I told you there are two terminals, right? So, one anode is made of p-type semiconductor and the cathode is made of n-type semiconductor. So, a p-n junction is formed when I combine a p-type semiconductor and a n-type semiconductor. You know what is a semiconductor? Semiconductor is nothing but a material which conducts current only when it reaches a threshold value. Conductor, you know, it is a good conductor, always carries, always conducts current. Insulator, on the other hand, does not conduct current. Semiconductor is on our choice. Like, for example, if I want the device to conduct, it will conduct. So, that is my semiconductor. And we have a p-type semiconductor. How a p-type semiconductor is formed is by doping impurities. That impurities must be of acceptor impurities. What is acceptor impurities? You would have learned in your physics classes. Acceptor impurities are nothing but trivalent impurities. The elements with valency 3, for example, boron, aluminium, all these will have the valency as 3. So, those are coming under acceptor impurities. And n-type impurity, n-type semiconductor, n-type semiconductor is made of using donor impurities. What is donor? Donors are nothing but pentavalent impurities. You can note it down. The examples of pentavalent impurities are phosphorus, arsenic and we have few others. So, the most popularly used impurities are these. 
So, the most important characteristic as you can see of a PM junction diode is, I told you earlier, it is only one direction current flow from positive to negative. Why it is not the opposite? Why yeah, negative to positive? Why uh, negative direction to positive direction is it impossible? Abdina? We have this very high resistance because from negative end to positive end, it is uh, giving you heavy resistance. It will not conduct current in that direction. So, that is the most important characteristic of a PN junction diode. Moving on, this is the image. So, you can see p-type semiconductor. So, you see lot of holes here. Okay, as you can see there are lot of holes. So, the majority carriers are holes. Only here and there I can see some electrons. So, minority carriers is electrons. So, you know holes are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged. Whereas, when you see n-type semiconductors, holes are very less. Holes you can see very less amount which is minority carriers and the electrons are majority carriers. You can see the blue color line, the blue color balls, all these are electrons, right? So, this is separately my p-type semiconductor and n-type semiconductor. P-type semiconductor is made of acceptor impurities. N-type semiconductor is made of donor impurities. Right. So, what happens when I combine these two? When I have a P-type semiconductor, when I have a N-type semiconductor, when I combine these two, there forms a junction. That junction is called P-N junction. So, in a piece of semiconductor material, if one half doped with P-type impurity, other half doped with N-type impurity, a P-N junction is formed. The plane that is dividing these two halves is called the P-N junction. We call it by other names, depletion region or the P-N wall, depletion wall, barrier. All these are the different names given for the junction. Okay. So, in N-type material, as I told you, free electrons, electrons are more and P-type material, holes are more. Okay. So, where usually when you see from a higher concentration region, the molecules will move from higher concentration to lower concentration region. This is the nature of molecules or ions. So, this process, the movement from higher concentration to lower concentration is called diffusion. So, what happens is the free electrons which is higher in N type is moving to P type now. And the holes which is major concentration of P type is moving towards the N type. So, this process of movement is called diffusion. Very important, this is called diffusion. So, now you can see the image. So, I told you here I had P type, here I had N type. P type I am connecting it to anode, N type I am connecting to cathode. So, P type is my positive. N type is my cath uh, negative which is cathode. So, you can see majority are negatives which is nothing but free electrons and here you can see majority are positives. Positives is nothing but holes. So, when I have combined these two what happens is due to the law of attraction, due to the law of attraction and diffusion process. Two things are happening here. One is diffusion process and the other one is law of attraction. A small amount of holes moving into the N type and a small amount of electrons are moving into the p-type. So, after certain amount of time, you can see a very rigid wall-like structure is formed because of these charges. This is called immobile charges and this region is called depletion region or it is also known as space charge region or it is also called barrier potential. So, this is how a p-n junction is formed. This is the wall. You know, it is very, very difficult to break this wall. Just by uh, applying any other forces, it is not possible. Only thing what you have to do is you have to apply biasing. So, what I will be doing? I will be connecting a battery. I will be connecting a battery which means I am giving this supply, electric field. If I connect a battery, slowly I can try to break this wall and the charges will move. The moment of charges is called current. Clear? So, this formation we have completed. So, biasing and how to give the battery supply by the connections will be discussed in the next class. Thank you.